Alicante and we've just been on the road in this brand new bike from Triumph. This is the Daytona 660 and as the name suggests is a 660 midweight CC bike and what a ride just riding around all the twisty windy roads of Spain. The Spanish roads are just so smooth and just so perfect to ride and the weather it's been good to us but let's talk about it. Let's start with the design and then I'll tell you more about my experience with it and I've got a couple of questions at the end of this which are a, is this really a Daytona? We'll talk about that. And uh, does it achieve what it's set out to be? We'll talk about that as well. But yeah, let's start with the design. Starting with the front is very sporty. I love all the sculptured aspects of the bike itself. In fact, I've been doing so many car reviews that I keep thinking of cars in my head when I'm talking about this. But yes, Tommy, it's a motorbike. It's a super bike, well, sports bike. Anyway, back to the design. So this is very tidy. I love what they've done with this area, covering up some of the inner sides, the underneath workings of, you know, what the bike's about. It looks very good. It adds to the effect of what this is meant to be a sports bike. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about this tire. These are Michelin Power 6, which is different from what we get on the Trident 660. I'm going to bring this up quite often because it has some underpinnings of what we see on the Trident 660, which some people would have questions about as well. But anyway, back to this, we have twin discs. These are 310 millimeters. We've got uh, four piston radio calipers on there as well. And these are actually Triumph branded, uh, but I don't know too much about that, but I think it's actually designed and manufactured by Triumph, which is probably the first time they've done that on their bikes in general. And that works really well. Taking that on the road, the brakes are really good and responsive uh, without overpowering or too much. Nice and progressive, which I quite like. And then we move just further back a little bit. And again, you can see how they've designed this. This is actually plastic here, but they've done it so that it covers that steel frame that we've got underneath it, which again, I love. I just love how tidy it is. I love this C60 just written on here, which is nice as well. And then we move further back. We get the exhaust on here, very similar to what we've seen on the Trident C60, but this is actually revived as well, or revised rather. So it's just a bit better in the sense of the way it sounds and stuff like that, which is not too bad. On the front, we have a uh, shower fork on there. So that's a separate function, big piston shower fork, upside down forks on the front, gives you about 110 millimeters travel. It's fixed as well, so you can't adjust that. But when we move towards the back, we have another shower monoshock on the back. That one has preload as well, so you can actually change that depending on if you have a pillion uh, on the back or whatever. And then we have twin swing arms on the back. The brake disc on the back is single, and this is 220 millimeters in terms of size. We have ABS on both sides, front and back. Again, power six on here. The back tires are wider. So again, just allows for that better handling and agility and how dynamic this is when you get on the road. So that's pretty much what we have here. The engine itself gives you 95 PS, which is really good on the road. Talking about uh, 69 Newton meters of torque, plenty of top end red line as well. It's gone up to more than 12,000 revs. So you can actually redline this a bit more compared to your Trident 660. And it just delivers more power, more torque as well across the range, which honestly on the road, you just have to experience it to fully understand what I'm talking about. Over on the back, we have LED brake lights. These are quite similar to what we see on the Trident 660, but they've updated this as well. So uh, you know, like in cars, when you slam your brake all of a sudden and you get the hazard lights when it flashes in traffic, for example, this will now do that as well, which is pretty cool. I love how this just hangs and suspends. It's just floating on the back. Pretty cool, right? And then we talk about the seat. One thing I love about the seat is the fact that this is now on its own and this is separate. So that way you have a passenger seat on the back, but if you don't want that, you can take this off and add a different accessory that allows you to look a bit more solo in terms of riding around and stuff like that. On here, we have 14 liters of fuel tank here. Again, it's got the typical Triumph design to it, but it's nicely sculptured. So you got this area where we can, you can easily just tuck in your knees when you're speeding or whatever you want to do when you open it up. And then you got this sculptured bit on the top as well. Looks really nice. It comes in this black color, so they're available in red as well and a white color. They've got official names, so don't shoot the messenger. But yeah, it's basically black, red and white. And then over here, we have the handlebar. This is 736 millimeters in terms of width, which is great if you're gonna be weaving through traffic and stuff, it's not too wide, perfect. And more on the size, this is actually 201 kilograms wet. And also in terms of seating height, I think it's around 800 and 10 millimeters, I think, which is great. I can basically flat foot this myself. So 
I'm about five foot 11, so I can easily just sit on this and it's really nice. And it's not too heavy to be able to maneuver even for someone my size. And I'm not exactly someone who bangs weight in the gym. <laughs> on the left side, we have plenty of controls there to control things on the monitor. We have dual monitor system over there. I won't talk too much about that until we get one in for review. You can get extras on there. For example, heated grips, which this one has. You can pay for extras like the quick shift as well. So if that's something you want, you can do that on here. But I love the front as well, just the big fairing on the front so looks really cool the mirrors are easily adjustable so you can fold them in so if you were to park this up it's easy to just get into the garage without having to worry about that at all visibility is good as well in the mirror i can easily just see what's behind me which is perfect but again the front just looks really nice and aggressive we have those two led front lights there and the radiator is underneath nicely tucked away as well it's big uh, compared to the Trident 660, they've moved some of the air intake, they've moved it from there, put it over here as well. So better cooling. There's a bunch of new stuff on there as well, like the crank and so much stuff in there that's new to make this what it's meant to be, which is a sports bike. So back to those two questions that I said at the start though, is this a Daytona? I think it depends what you ask. If you ask the enthusiast who knows all about Daytona from the start to up until now, they'll probably tell you no, and they have their reason why they say that. But if you were to ask new people about this, they will tell you it's a taste of what Daytona is. It's a taste of being on a sport bike. If you're someone who might be intimidated by getting something that's more powerful, this is something that you would actually go for. C60, CC, I think in my opinion, is more than enough. And then to the riding experience, I think it's just so nimble, so agile, you can push it as much as your confidence level allows you to push it. And it's just, reacts to what you do. It's nice and dynamic. The power delivery is smooth. It's really nice. The braking is good. The clutch as well is just nice in terms of gear shifting up and down. I think it's just perfect. In fact, you might not need that quick shift uh, clutch because it just works really well. The wire by throttle system, it just works really well as well. Just rolling it. It's just honestly, there's so much perfection in what this is. So the second question, does it do what it's set out to be or do? I think it actually does. It's a sport bike and it acts and behaves like a sport bike. In fact, the sitting height and the sitting position, they've done it in a way that is just nicely balanced that you don't start to feel too much pain just by riding for ages. Today we rode for about two hours or more and it took so long for me to start feeling it on my wrists, uh, which for me, confession, first time on a sport bike, honestly, it changed my mind about what sports bike are. And this is probably a really good entry level and the slapped name Daytona on it, like my thinking, I'm thinking if you think about the Ford Marquee, for example, the slapped the Mustang name on it, it's not a Mustang, but it shows the level of trust they have in the product to slap that name on it. And to put Daytona on this product, it shows the level of trust they have in it. That's gonna spread across people, new customers looking to buy this, young riders that's trying to get this, they're gonna take that into consideration. So honestly, fantastic bike. But over to you, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, uh, drop them there as well. But it's been a great time with this bike. I'm gonna miss it and I hope Triumph, I can get one in for review very soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.